Hey guys, Emma McAdam here. Today we're going to talk about natural options for treating anxiety. Now, when people are looking to treat their anxiety without medication, what they usually mean is they want to know what herbs and supplements are going to work for them. And because I get asked this a lot, I did a ton of research last year on the topic. So in this video, I'm going to go over 15 of the research backed natural treatments for anxiety. And these are treatments that have been shown to have a positive impact on anxiety. But I'm also going to talk about a much more holistic approach to mental health. At the end of this video, I'll list seven other effective treatments for anxiety. But this video is mostly about supplements. So let's talk about a couple of ways to combat anxiety other than medication. There's this incredibly widespread misconception out there, this idea that if you get diagnosed with depression or anxiety, that means that you were born with anxiety or depression and that it's so genetic that there's nothing you can do about it. Now, this is a misconception. Of course, there's a biological factor, but there's about 20 other factors too. It's not your fault, but it is treatable. So don't get sucked into this unhelpful belief that you just have to suffer through life. I go into a lot more detail on this in my online course, Change Your Brain, 10 Alternatives to Medication to Change Brain Chemistry. And this course teaches you ways to change your thinking and actions that actually change your brain chemistry. So check out the link in the description. But in this video, we're going to talk about supplements. So let's see what some of our non-medication options for treatment are. I'm going to be referring to this long list that I have that is research backed. I've done a lot of research to make sure that this video is based on some of the most rigorous and well researched information out there. And so if you want to download the chart that I'm using or see my references, hop on over to my website, www.therapynutshell.com. First, a couple of disclaimers. Number one, I am not a doctor. You should always work with a doctor before making any changes to medication or supplements. I am a therapist who reads the research, boils it down, and shares it with people. Number two, I am not anti-medication. I recommend to my clients that they consider the pros and cons of multiple treatment approaches as we try to combat mental illness. Medication can be a very helpful option for many people. I just have a lot of clients who don't want to use medication, so I want to make sure to help them understand other treatment options. Caveat number three, just because something is natural does not mean it's safer or that it has less side effects. Snake venom, lead, and arsenic are all natural substances that will poison or kill you. And the thing about supplements is they're not evaluated by the FDA. So that means they haven't been rigorously tested for purity, safety, or effectiveness. An example of this was some homeopathic teething tablets for babies. These were sold on the shelves of Walmart and other stores, and it turns out they weren't pure enough. Some of them contained varying amounts of belladonna, and because of this, some babies died. So because supplements aren't regulated by the FDA, these supplement companies can make claims of all sorts of things that aren't backed by research, so they might not be true. So just because something is natural does not mean that it's safer. It actually has less research behind it to regulate it. So it actually has less regulation behind it. Okay, caveat number four. Many of the people purporting a certain supplement are also using mostly anecdotal evidence. So this means that their friend or their sister-in-law or someone that they know used the supplement and it helped. And while that may be true, it's not enough to determine if that's gonna be effective for the majority of people. There's a lot of other factors in action, like the placebo effect. This placebo effect occurs when people believe that they're gonna get feeling better by taking something. And so they do feel better. It's called the expectancy effect because when you expect that things are going to feel better, then something changes in your, in your system that makes you feel better for a while. So it's not actually the supplement or whatever you were taking. It's the expectancy, this belief that you're going to get feeling better that's actually creating the change. So with many supplements, when people start taking them, they report feeling better but it's at the exact same levels of feeling better as someone taking a sugar pill, meaning that the change came from their belief and not from the substance. I do believe plants and herbs can be helpful, but I also really don't like it when people selling oils or supplements 
promise more than is backed by rigorous research. There are so many claims out there. So if you run a search, there will be hundreds of supplements claiming to have benefits for anxiety. And this is from CBD oil to lavender. But the truth is there isn't enough research on most of them to know if these are safe or effective. So I'm going to cover 15 supplements that at least have some rigorous research. And as far as the rest of these supplements go, they just aren't backed by solid research. And that's the reason why most doctors aren't prescribing these other supplements, because there aren't big enough or rigorous enough trials to determine how safe they are. So good research includes multiple studies, high numbers of participants, randomized groups. So that means people assign them, people don't assign themselves to whether or not they take that supplement. The uh, doctor or the, the researcher assigns them to random groups and they compare those random groups with a placebo. The other thing that good research does is it minimizes bias and conflict of interest. So that means that the person running the study is not the same person who's selling the supplement. So for this reason, controlled studies are expensive and they're often really limited when it comes to supplements. So most supplements don't have good rigorous research behind them. Now, we're about to start talking about which supplements do have good research that shows they're helpful with anxiety. But before that, I just gotta say, if you wanna try any of these supplements, work with your doctor, but know that you're basically running a little experiment on yourself. Now, taking any kind of medication comes with risks. There's currently no way to know who's going to experience side effects from Prozac or Xanax. But the difference between medication and supplements is that medications approved by the FDA have been shown through rigorous research to have a high enough benefit to risk ratio. Okay, so if you've made it through my disclaimers, then you're ready for some scientifically backed information, not just, hey, this supplement worked for my sister-in-law. So that being said, there are some supplements that have been shown to be effective. So let's talk about some of the research backed natural treatments for anxiety. Whew. Two pages of disclaimers. <laughs> That's a lot. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is vitamins. So most essential micronutrients are absorbed through food. And this is especially from food like fruits, nuts, and vegetables. For most people, vitamins and supplements are actually a waste of money. However, some people don't absorb vitamins well and others have poor diet or issues that lead them to a vitamin deficiency. So a deficiency in vitamin A, B6, B12, C, D, and E can all contribute to anxiety and depression symptoms. The best source for vitamins is a healthy diet high in plants and low in processed food. However, vitamin D deficiencies are really common. Around 40% of Americans are D deficient, and that is closely associated with depression. So you can get tested for D deficiencies, and then you can choose to supplement with vitamin D. And getting sunlight also helps your body process and absorb vitamin D. There's also decent amounts of research showing that for some people, supplementing with vitamin D, B6, or B12 can have a positive impact on anxiety and depression. Also, taking a multivitamin has been shown to help with generalized anxiety disorder. But one of the reasons that vitamins are at the top of my list is that they're safe, they're cheap, and there are very few side effects. There are few downsides to taking a multivitamin every day. Okay, the next supplement we're gonna talk about is magnesium. Magnesium is a common natural element. It's essential for hundreds of bodily functions. So every single cell in your body needs magnesium to perform its day-to-day -day routine. And magnesium assists with energy creation, with protein formation, with gene maintenance, and nervous cell regulation. Uh, magnesium is naturally found in food, uh, especially in dark leafy greens, uh, nuts, avocados, bananas, and a deficiency in magnesium can make a really big difference. In one case study I heard about, a woman started taking calcium supplements and this depleted the magnesium in her body. And when her magnesium was really low, she developed OCD symptoms that were really disabling. When she worked with her doctor and decreased the calcium and then increased the magnesium supplements, the symptoms went away. So there's actually quite a bit of research showing positive effects and that magnesium is relatively safe. 
In a randomized controlled trial in depressed older adults, 450 milligrams of magnesium daily improved mood as effectively as an antidepressant drug. In another study, mice with magnesium deficiency were shown to be more anxious. So more research is needed, but again, magnesium is relatively safe and inexpensive. One of the common side effects of taking too much magnesium is that you'll get the runs, but that's not the worst side effect. So it might be a supplement worth trying. Okay, the next supplement we're gonna talk about is zinc. Zinc is another naturally occurring element and you can get it from your food, but there have been a couple of studies showing that a zinc deficiency is associated with OCD, panic attacks, and generalized anxiety. And there's a couple of studies showing that supplementing with zinc has improved anxiety symptoms. So again, zinc is a relatively safe supplement. It's common, um, it's easy to find, it's inexpensive, and it has few side effects. Another supplement that has been shown to be helpful with anxiety is fish oil or omega-3. So omega-3 fatty acids are really important for your body and brain. Um, few nutrients have been studied as thoroughly as omega-3 fatty acids. So it's been found to be very safe and studies show kind of mixed results as to whether it's effective. So some studies show positive impact on brain health, depression, and anxiety, and other studies show little to no benefit. So my interpretation of the benefits of fish oil is that some people are deficient and they really benefit, while the majority of people don't notice a difference. The biggest downside of taking fish oil is that fish oil harvesting can negatively impact the environment. And um, the other thing that can happen is you can get fish tasting burps, which is pretty nasty, but not super harmful. Okay, so now let's talk about another supplement. Now this one I'm kind of on the fence about, but it does have some decent research behind it. It's kava. It's also called kava kava. It's a member of the nightshade family of plants and it's native to the South Pacific Islands. Pacific Islanders have used it for hundreds of years as a ceremonial drink to promote this state of relaxation. More recently, kava has received a lot of attention for its relaxing and stress-reducing properties. Kava is one supplement that has good amounts of research backing its effectiveness at treating anxiety. So multiple studies uh, that were properly conducted with large number of subjects found moderate improvement in anxiety symptoms. The American Family Physicians Journal and the Nutrition Journal reported a review of multiple studies showing kava to be safe and effective. However, kava is metabolized through the liver and there's the potential for liver damage. So this led to the supplement being banned in parts of Europe and Canada. More recent research has shown this side effect to be very rare, but as a precaution, you shouldn't take it with other medications that are metabolized through the liver. And it should be a short-term treatment using high quality supplements. Now, in general, I'm less interested in supplements that seem to kind of suppress emotion than I am in supplements that meet nutritional deficiencies. So that's why in general, I tend to be more of a proponent of vitamins and um, naturally occurring elements that meet a deficiency than I am about supplements that kind of force you to feel calm. So for example, drug use um, like marijuana or alcohol use, those can help take away anxiety in the short term, but what they're really doing is just suppressing that anxiety reaction. And I'm more interested in supplements that help meet the need of our body's functioning, make it function better, and that that kind of resolves anxiety in a more healthy way. Okay, so the next supplement we're gonna talk about is inositol. So this is also known as vitamin B8, and it's naturally occurring in food. The US average diet includes about one gram a day but there were some studies testing um, inositol. They were supplementing with 12 to 18 grams, so a lot more than the average person eats. And it actually has shown some pretty impressive results with relatively few side effects. So inositol is considered safe and it's found to be somewhat effective, um, specifically with panic disorder, agoraphobia, depression, and OCD, though more research really is needed. Okay, the next supplement we're gonna talk about is passion flower. There are about 500 known species of passion flower. So it's this family of plants, it's known as Passiflora, Passiflora incarnata, and it may help treat anxiety and insomnia. 
Native Americans have used passion flower to treat a variety of conditions. So this includes boils, wounds, earaches, and liver problems. In Europe, people have used passion flower to treat restlessness and agitation for years. And some people use it to treat anxiety. So traditionally, it's considered a calming herb. But the effects of uh, passion flower are milder than valerian root or kava, so it's often mixed with other herbs. So passion flower has multiple studies showing mixed results. One study of people doing dental work showed positive results with low side effects. And another study tested passion flower as a way to ease anxiety before an operation, and it showed passion flower to be more helpful than a placebo. But other studies have shown a really minimal effect. So overall, the research is inconclusive. Um, one of the difficulties with passion flower and other herbal remedies is that an herb is a really complex substance, meaning so it's a lot of times it's mixed in with active ingredients and a bunch of other ineffective or possibly toxic substances. So because it's not pure, it's hard to know what's working and what isn't. As of 2010, there were three human trials that showed the effectiveness of passion flower as a treatment for anxiety-related disorders. So passion flower has some decent research behind it, but again, it's hard to get a pure dose of it. Okay, so the next supplement we're gonna talk about is valerian. Valerian root is often referred to as nature's valium, and this herb has actually been used since ancient times to promote tranquility and sleep. And although it has received a lot of positive attention, there's also some questions that have been raised about whether it's effective and whether it's safe. So people think that it may impact the GABA receptors, um, and it might impact the amygdala. So this is the fear part of the brain. And they think it works in a similar way to Valium and Xanax. So as with most of these supplements, there really aren't enough studies and enough participants in the studies to really evaluate the effectiveness as, of valerian as a recommended treatment for anxiety. However, there is quite a bit of research suggesting that valerian is helpful with insomnia and it has rare and fairly mild side effects. So valerian is a potential option. You could try it yourself and see how it impacts you. The next supplement we're gonna talk about is chamomile. So chamomile has been used for thousands of years as an anti-anxiety treatment. And in animal trials, it's been shown to have an anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer properties. And you know, inflammation and anxiety are closely related. So there's good reason to believe that this can be an effective uh, supplement for anxiety. But these results really haven't been tested in humans. So there were two small studies that showed mixed results. One study showed that people taking saffron for general anxiety disorder have less anxiety than the placebo group. And another one showed that the placebo did just as well as chamomile. So results are pretty non-convincing. Chamomile is a blood thinner, so you need to be cautious around that. And some people also have allergic reactions to it. So I mentioned saffron. We're going to talk about saffron. It's been used for centuries to treat cramps, depression, and asthma. Two studies showed that it had a positive effect on depression and anxiety. In one study, the participants took saffron by itself, and the other study combined its active ingredient with an antidepressant medication. So research showed that the group taking saffron did better than the placebo group or the medication-only group. So there's some research showing that saffron can be effective with depression and anxiety. The side effects of saffron include dry mouth, um, agitation, drowsiness and low mood, and they're fairly rare. So I would consider saffron one of, those med, uh, one of those supplements that you could consider taking, but I don't know if it would be at the top of my list. Okay, so the next supplement we're gonna talk about, this one's gotten a lot of hype lately, is L-lysine and L-arginine. So these are essential amino acids that can be found in food, and these are two supplements that most likely have an impact on the neurotransmitters in your brain. So they think that L-lysine potentially impacts serotonin. So this calms the brain's anxiety response and it possibly decreases the stress hormone uh, cortisol. One study showed that participants were better able to handle stress compared to the placebo group. And the other study measured cortisol in the body and found decreased levels of cortisol after taking these supplements. So this means decreased stress. Both studies used an L-lysine and an L-arginine combination supplement, 
but like most supplements there just aren't enough studies to determine how effective these supplements are and to evaluate the risks but the evidence is pointing in the direction that these supplements may be helpful and there were no reported side effects so you might want to consider trying l-lysine and l-arginine and like all supplements again work with your doctor to find out which of these might be best for you so GABA, which is gamma amniobutric acid, is a naturally occurring amino acid and it works as a neurotransmitter in your brain. GABA can help us calm down uh, when it's released naturally in the brain. And this can help with feelings of anxiety, and stress and fear. And it can also help to prevent seizures. So as a result of these properties, GABA has become a really popular supplement lately. And this is partly because it isn't available from very many food sources. The only foods that, can, that contain GABA are fermented ones like kimchi, miso, and tempa. So there is some evidence uh, in favor of a calming effect of GABA food supplements, but most of this evidence was reported by researchers who had a conflict of interest. So basically this is a very little research supplement with evidence of a small positive effect on anxiety. Okay, so now let's talk about L-theanine. So L-theanine is an amino acid. It's most commonly found in tea leaves and in black tea. Um, you can also find a very small amount in bay bolette mushrooms. I do not know if I'm saying that right. Bay bolette. Um, it can be found in both black and green tea and you can buy it as a pill or a tablet form at a lot of drugstores. So there were five randomized controlled trials. So that's the good kind of trial, the good kind of research with a total of 104 participants. And they found that L-theanine reduced stress and anxiety in people who were experiencing stressful situations. So that's a good result, right? Another study found that it increased, that it increased relaxation without causing drowsiness and that it reduced resting heart rate. So, L-theanine has some limited research showing effectiveness and the only side effects reported were those kind of related to caffeine. So right now there's not enough evidence to strongly recommend this supplement, but I will tentatively say like this might be worth trying. Okay, so now we're going to talk about one of the most popular natural treatments out there, St. John's wort. And this is really popular uh, natural treatment for depression. And it's also one of the most researched uh, supplement out there. There are dozens and dozens of high quality studies showing that it is effective at treating mild to moderate depression. And many studies show that it's as effective as an antidepressant medication. And some studies even show less side effects or similar side effects to antidepressant med medication. So it has not been shown to be effective for anxiety, but since anxiety and depression are often comorbid, so that means that they're often experienced at the same time, you might want to consider St. John's wort. And because of the quality and the quantity of the research, I feel a lot more confident about knowing what to expect with St. John's wort. And because there's a lot of research, we also know more about the side effects. So St. John's wort actually has similar side effects to uh, SSRIs. SSRIs are those antidepressant medications like Prozac and Lexapro. And this includes the side effect that it can interfere with other medications. So it can even interfere with anxiety medication. So with these controlled trials, the um, side effects were comparable to placebos and fewer than antidepressants. But like all supplements, St. John's wort is not regulated by the FDA. Okay, let's talk about another supplement that is um, the opposite of helpful with anxiety, and this is caffeine. So caffeine is the most widely used psychoactive substance in the world. Most adults use caffeine every single day, but the effects of caffeine on the brain and nervous system can actually be pretty destructive. So caffeine crosses the blood brain barrier in minutes and it shuts down the production of adenosine. So adenosine is the relaxation and calming chemical in the brain. So when you shut that down, that's why a lot of people feel more energy uh, when they drink caffeine. But one cup of coffee can increase anxiety and it can impact sleep for up to 48 hours. So drinking a lot of caffeine or consuming caffeine can make you anxious for up to two days. 
If you're not sure of how caffeine is affecting you, you could try going without caffeine for seven days and see what a difference it makes. Okay, so you have made it through this super long and somewhat technical video on um, anxiety supplements. I'm including a link to some of the best literature reviews in the description. So this is, if you wanna read the original research yourself, uh, check out the link in the description. So if you'd like to see my entire write-up with attached footnotes or download my summary chart, check out my website, therapynutshell.com. Now, let's talk about a few other non-medicinal treatments. So exercise has been shown to be more effective than medication at treating anxiety and depression. Exercise changes your brain chemistry. It runs your nervous system through this natural cycle of excitement and relaxation. And it's just, it's really good for you. So if you're experiencing anxiety, you may wanna consider adding exercise into your routine before you consider adding um, you know, a lot of supplements. Another completely non-medicinal treatment that has been shown to be really effective is therapy. So cognitive behavioral therapy, acceptance and commitment therapy, EMDR, these are more effective long-term than medication alone. Another treatment that's been shown to be effective is mindfulness and meditation. So these have been shown to change brain structure and chemistry. Uh, meditation can teach emotion management skills and it also turns on the parasympathetic side of your nervous system. So the parasympathetic side is this calming, soothing, relaxing um, aspect of your nervous system. So another natural way to uh, improve your brain's functioning is to work on your gut health. So your gut is your second brain. It produces 95% of the serotonin in your body. So serotonin is one of those neurotransmitters that's associated with happiness, um, and that's what Prozac impacts. So 95% of the serotonin in your body is produced in your gut. And one of the ways you can improve your gut health is by incorporating fermented foods, probiotics, prebiotics into your diet. So this is foods like yogurt and sauerkraut um, or other fermented foods. And that, can, that has been shown to be helpful with anxiety and depression. Another natural treatment for anxiety and depression is improving your nutrition. So, I mean, everyone pretty much knows what they should be doing to have better nutrition. Eat less sugar, um, have less processed foods, eat more vegetables, more fruits, and uh, you know, decrease how much meat and fat you eat. Another thing you can look at as far as nutrition goes is some people have food allergies or food intolerances. And one that comes up a lot this decade is gluten. Um, so some people really do have uh, more anxiety when they're eating gluten. Other people, this might just be a placebo effect, um, but you could try cutting gluten or sugar or even milk out of your diet just to see if one of these common allergens is impacting your anxiety levels. Okay, so there's two more treatments that have been shown to be effective with uh, anxiety and depression. So another natural way to treat anxiety is to train yourself to turn on your relaxation response. So learning to relax and calm down. And when you learn to calm your body, your body can t tell your brain that you're safe and can decrease anxiety. So I've got a whole playlist on this on YouTube. It's an anxiety skills playlist. So check that out if you wanna learn more of those relaxation skills. You can also learn to decrease anxiety through uh, developing good life skills and habits. So these are things like developing a morning routine, training yourself to monotask instead of multitask, doing good self-care, um, practicing facing and resolving problems, and uh, developing good boundaries with other people, and getting enough sleep. So these are all things you can work on with a therapist, or you can just keep practicing on your own. My online course, Change Your Brain, uh, goes into a lot more detail about these life skills and how they change brain chemistry and how to create a well-rounded approach to improving mental health. So I've got a link in the description with a coupon, so check that out. If you'd like to see more videos about how you can treat depression, anxiety, and get better mental health overall, please just subscribe to get more content like this. And you never know who might benefit from information like this, so please share this video. Thank you for watching and take care.